Okay, so my name is Ben. I'm a fifth year dentistry student. As I met some of you this morning. So I've been here since first year, so I've been here for four years. I'm going into my final year in dentistry. Um, what can I say? It's gone really quick, right? I remember the first time I walked in through them gates, you know, and I can't believe I'm on my last year. But, you know, it's been so fast. So this is the uni campus, the main campus. So can I have a show of hands for people that are doing first year, second year? Okay, there's quite a few. Okay, so first year, second year, you probably be more practically in the main campus. As you get uh, further up in the years, you'll do clinicals and you'll be doing rotations if you're medicine. If you're dentistry, you'll be in, uh, what do you say, dental clinics, right? So you would do, you'd be doing dental clinics. So, um, in your first and second years, for, for the people that are doing uh, pre-clinical years, you'll be doing uh, subjects such as anatomy, biology, um, chemistry is another campus, they have a whole building for chemistry. Uh, you'll be doing physiology, um, you do pathology, so that's broken up into two subjects, pathophys, pathomorph, um, just trying to think from the top of my head. Internal medicine from third year above, um, yeah, so and so, there's, there's a lot of subjects to be covered. So, this building, uh, this is where you find the Dean's office, I'll show you the Dean's office. It's a small room, it's not, it's not big, but it's room number 33. So, um, what else can I say about this building? So yeah, practically, lessons are in here. And if you need anything in regards to getting permission slips uh, for holidays, you know, say if you have a family emergency, you need to uh, run back to, back to the UK, um, you can come here, speak to the dean, she give you a permission slip, and then you give it to your teachers, and then you get it off. Now, I did tell some of you in the morning, who's doing online and who's doing offline? Online? Online. online. So, okay, for those of you that are doing offline, the first semester will break up before Christmas. Now, normally, Ukrainians, they're Orthodox Christians, so they celebrate their Christmas on the 7th of January, right? But they have a very big New Year's, so they normally tend to break up on the 26th. Now, we've already spoken to the dean and the university about obviously people celebrating Christmas and if we can get it done before. So they, they've agreed for 20th, after 20th it's a reasonable excuse to say that I celebrate Christmas and can I go home and celebrate with my family. They'll allow you that time off and then second semester will probably start back up roughly around the 15th of Jan. It can be a week early, no, no not a week early, a week late, but it's in between that time frame. So that's holidays. Easter, to be honest, you probably get about three, four days. Not even that, you know. Uh, Easter's not big here. They they really go big on their New Year's. I was there last year for New Year's, and it was a party, wouldn't it be? <laughs> so, yeah, so, has anyone got any questions in regards to the campus, or anything in regards to university, something I missed? So, what I'll say about the teachers as well, the teachers, they do speak English. Some of them, they have obviously accents, which is understandable. So it gets a bit of time to get used to the accents. But they do have reasonably good English for you to you know, understand what they're saying in the lectures. Um, I would say, personally, I don't know how much information I pick up in the lectures, probably about 5-10%. I have to go home and go over it. That's with any lecture you go to. You know, you tend to doze off or you tend to think about something else. So I would say there's a lot of independent study involved, but the teachers are very helpful in regards to if you don't understand anything, you can always ask them questions. After the lesson, you know, they're always help, helpful in that respect. Also, another thing is, obviously, you guys are new to the country, so uh, some of you might be worried about the language, right? I've been here four years, I don't know Russian. I have no idea. When someone speaks to me in Russian, I don't know what they're saying. I try getting by with a few words here and there that I've picked up, but I just make it out like I understand. Yeah? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, you don't, honestly. With, with the language, don't be too worried about the language. Obviously, you have Google Translate. You know, you can do conversations on Google Translate now. You know, so it's very, it's very easy to get, to get around, do what you need to do. Um, I did try to learn it in my first year, but I completely forgot about it when I went back to the UK. I had no one to practice it with. That's the problem. If you don't have a language to practice with, someone, then yeah, I, I'm not good with languages anyway. I don't speak English. That's about it. I'm starting to forget my own native tongue now. <laughs> So yeah, we'll go inside the uni, I'll show you the Dean's office, um, I'll see if I can get the Dean to come out, but uh, it depends how busy she is. So, let's take a 
walk inside the campus. Everyone start face masks. Yeah? In the lecture, when the doctor is speaking, they tend to ask you questions before you even do the lecture. See if you read them. So, as I said, number 33 is the dean's office, right? This is where you get your whatever permissions if you need, uh, if you have any questions in regards to lessons. If you have an absence, which I think if it still costs the same amount, it's 200 driven if you miss a lesson without a reasonable explanation. So, if you're, if you're ill or you have obviously some medical condition, they want to see a doctor's note, right, which you can get from obviously a hospital or a private clinic, you know. So that's the only way you're getting, your, getting out of a lesson. Some teachers might be lenient, so when you, do, when you do turn up to your next lesson after having an absence, they might allow you to just enter back in. But most of them are strict, so they will say you need a permission from the dean. So that permission will cost you 200 gryvin, which works out to be about six pounds, I think. So yeah, so that's in regards to absences. So just try not to miss any lessons. Otherwise, you know, it does. I know it's six pounds, but it does total up afterwards. Um, you guys that are studying offline, uh, you'll be coming here. I think it will be on Monday next week. So you'll come to the dean's office. Uh, obviously, we'll tell you. Uh, we're going to have to do it year by year. So. I don't know who will go first, maybe it depends on how many students have come into one year. We tend to do second years on one day, first years on another day, third years on another day. So you'll get that information a bit later on. So you'll be coming back to this uh, university next week. Uh, here in that room on the far right, um, you're gonna, that's where you're going to get your timetables for your course. As, you're, as you are aware, you are starting on the 15th of September this year. Last year, I think we did start a bit later than that. But I think they want, like I said to some of you this morning, they want to get everyone in early. So if you do want holidays, like Christmas or so and so, they can space that out in the year. Also as well, when it comes to the end of the year, you finish a bit more early than finishing at the end of June. I mean, we have a student here, Dr. Arsalan, right? He came last year into third year medicine. He finished, when did he finish? 30th of June? A bit later, right? So you went back to the UK in July. And that's because of crop. When did your normal lessons finish last year? I'm mid June. Mid June. So yeah, with medicine, medicine's a bit longer as well. Um, you finish about mid June. So then obviously you have to stay for his crop. Um, for you guys that are coming into third year or fourth year, you will have crop at the end of the year. And I've been told it's on the 28th of June. If anyone doing dentistry here? Okay, brilliant. So okay, so me. And Barbara over here, we're fifth year dentistry students. Barbara's been here for two years, right? No. Going into third. Going into your third. So he came as a graduate entry in, his thir in the third year. So with crop, we're dentistry students. Uh, any of you guys doing third year dentistry? Third year. Okay. So the academic timetable for the crop is roughly around April time, but I'll double check that for you. Yeah. So normally dentistry you do it earlier. Uh, earlier than medicine, uh, but your normal subjects will finish around end of May, June time. But I think we finish a bit more early than medicine. Um, yes? Uh, well, if you're a second, you still go to the exam. No, no, no. With second year preclinics, you have subject examinations. So you'll have, uh, for example, in second year dentistry, you'll have all the pathologies, you'll have biochemistry. So at the end of the year, they're going to ask you to obviously do the subject examinations. Um, if you do, like for example, if you don't pass it, it's not a big problem, you'll do a reset. And uh, with, in between all of that, you'll have subject examinations as well. So at the end of every topic that you finish, you'll have topic exams, which consist of roughly about 10 to 20 questions. So uh, it's multiple choice. If you don't pass a topic test, uh, you can't do the final exam examination in that subject. You have to pass all your topic tests throughout the year to get uh, qualified for your final examination. Yeah, so topic tests are every two weeks. Uh, depends on depends on how big the topic is, really. So you know, just keep on top of your work. 
There are obviously any questions in regards to the exam. The teachers, like I said, they're more than happy to help. They take an interest in people that actually take an interest in you know studying. If you're there and you're talking and stuff like that, they won't they won't give you the time of day. Honestly, they take they as you walk into your first lessons, they treat you as doctors, professionals. You don't get treated as a as a student in these universities. They expect you to have a passion. Well, I'm guessing everyone's got a passion here. That you know you come all the way to Ukraine to study it. Yeah? So they expect like you know interests and you know uh, keeping on top of your work and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, so next week, like I said, back room there, you're gonna get uh, introduced to your group leader. The group leaders are assigned. Um, they'll, be, they'll be assigned sometime this week. If your first year student coming into uh, the year, the first year students, I'm not gonna lie, they're gonna be uh, obviously new themselves, so they might just get randomly allocated, but. You know, if you're not comfortable being a group leader, then you know they'll pass it on to somebody else that doesn't mind. It looks good at the end of the day on your CV. It looks good on anything you put on, uh, put it on. So it just benefits you at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, next week, obviously, we'll get your timetables from here. I'll call be from that room, and you'll be assigned a group. I'm guessing everyone that's here in first year or second year, you'll probably be put together because you come around the same time to Ukraine. So I mean, like. Changing of groups is doesn't really happen. So if you do obviously meet somebody that you get on with later on, because there are going to be more students coming later, sometimes a group change doesn't work because the uni allocated. So you know if you request for group changes, I can't give you my hundred percent that that's going to happen. You know, it depends on how many people are in one group. I think group capacity now is at twelve because of COVID. It used to be bigger than that, but they, they've, they've narrowed it down now. So, you know, obviously, due to social distancing, I'm guessing, has everyone had their vaccinations yet? Yeah. Everyone, yeah? Okay, that's cool. Uh, because to enter the country, you need at least one vaccination. That's why I asked if everyone's fully vaccinated. Um, so, yeah, any other questions about uh, this building? Like I said, you know, like these rooms here, they might, they might be for some certain subjects, but they're... I can't tell you any uh, specific subject because there can be any subject, I don't know, it just depends where the uni allocates it. I mean, I had physics here in my first year in that room. Yeah, it is that room. I had physics in my first year. Actually, that, that was probably my best subject, the highest mark of that. Yeah, so physics was done by the dean. So, uh, the dean, so the dean of foreign students is, uh, is Dr. Maria. You'll, you'll meet her at some point. Uh, she did physics uh, for me in my first year, so it's good I made a good impression because she was the dean, so you know, <laughs> had to make a good impression. Um, so, yeah, classrooms, right? This is just a little office. Okay, another thing is credit books. Your credit books. Now, they are books that you keep, you'll get a credit book. Um, after you finish your subject, the teacher signs your credit book off. It's just for your own personal reference to say that you did complete the course, you know, you did complete that certain subject. Just for example, let's say there was a uni technical error, right, and it said, for example, I don't know, uh, you didn't pass biochemistry, right, and you said, no, I did, I got a signature here on, my, on, the, on the credit book. It can happen, technical errors, you know, so it's good if you keep that safe, get it signed by all the teachers' signatures, and you'll be getting that, I don't know if they've changed it now, I think you might get that from the office. But we got it from this room. If you do lose your credit book, just try not to, you have to get a new one. And then you need to get them signatures signed again from all them subjects. You know, so just try not to lose it. It's a very like it's important, but when you do finish off your course, you're gonna get a transcript anyway with all the subject signatures, your grades and everything at the end when you get your degree. It's gonna it's gonna I've I've seen it, it's got all the subjects on it. Uh, so it's just like credit books are just there for your own reference. For example, if your parents want to have a look what grades you got or whatever, see if you're on track, it could be used for that as well. You know, so yeah. So let me just see if this room is locked. Normally they do lock it when they're not used. Um, one upstairs. Hmm? Might be one upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's no classrooms going on, the rooms are technically they're, they're supposed to be locked. Another thing is as well, some teachers they like to um, if you they want they want you to be very punctual. So if you turn up 10 minutes late into a lesson, they'll probably have that door locked. You won't be able to get in. They'll lock it behind all the students, especially your lectures. They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't accept hardiness or anything like that. They expect you to be punctual. They expect you to be in 10 minutes early, waiting. 
you know. So just try not to be late for your lessons because they do lock it. I think after 10 or 15 minutes, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, that's they, they, they can be strict, but obviously teachers, the, some teachers are quite lenient. You know, they understand. Especially, you know, you come into this university, you come into a whole new country, you know, a whole new university. You know, some of them, they are lenient, but they want you to adapt to it very fast because as a doctor, you need to adapt to situations very fast. So that's what one teacher said to me once. Yeah, I stuck by me. I go, oh, doctor, you know, I'm new to the whole place. I'm not sure where to go. She goes, are you not going to be a doctor? You need to adapt. You know, so you've got a point. I can't, can't argue with that. But then I did say to him, I'm, I'm a dentist. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll take upstairs. See if I'm, see if I'm a little upstairs. Or seminar, you need to be wearing medical equipment. So that entitles lab coats, and if you do, or if you are doing clinics, they want you to wear Crocs. Yes, and everyone knows what, what Crocs are. Right? Yeah. So you do need to wear medical equipment. Medi uh, people that are studying general medicine, you need to have stethoscopes from third year and above. Sometimes you, they might require you to bring one in. Uh, if you don't know, if you don't have one. Uh, and you don't know where to get one, we can obviously direct you where to buy uh, stethoscopes from. You can get it from pharmacies now anyway, so... Uh, dentistry students, obviously, face masks are like, they like the new style now. I see people wearing Louis Vuitton face masks, you know, what's the point? So, face masks obviously are needed to be wear. If you have long hair, obviously you need to wear headgear, especially when you go into clinics. Um, yeah, lab coats. If you do clinics, you can wear scrubs if you find it more comfortable. Sometimes, you know, I like just putting on my scrubs, putting on a jacket and go straight into a clinic instead of just taking a lab coat in it. Now it is. So, um, yeah, so in regards to that, make sure you do take your lab coats. I mean, if you're first or second year, it's better if you do take one in just in case the doctor uh, that is teaching you. Um, sometimes they can be strict in that retrospect. If you don't have a... A uh, lab coat, they might just kick you out, you know. They want you to obviously wear it because you are a doctor, so that's another thing in regards to what you need to wear. Obviously, if you're going into lectures, you don't need Crocs for that, so that's only for your clinics and your rotations and everything like that. So, what I'll try doing, I'll try finding an empty room. That one's a bit occupied, so um, let's have a look here. It comes a lot, and if they're not locked, there's students in there, so I don't really need to their lessons. Now, you are going to have you are going to have a lot of Ukrainian students around here. It's fine. Everyone, uh, obviously, us foreigners, we, we study all together. We don't mix with the Ukrainian students. Uh, they tend to study medicine and dentistry in their own language, which is understandable. They don't do it in English or anything like that. So there's no mingling with uh, other students. I know in other places they are like, you know, there are Romanians actually study in English. You know, so. Um, yeah, so in regards to that, we obviously uh, stick together, which makes it a bit more easier for everyone to speak with, you know, get to know each other, you're all from the same place, you come all the way to Ukraine, you know, it's very easy to make friends um, and find people that, you know, you get on with. So, in regards to this building, uh, any other questions? Are there clinical labs, or skills labs in the, this building? In this building, I don't believe so, no. It's, like, this is just main campus, and then what they do is they have uh, di different mini campuses around the, you know, the, the city. The thing is they share campuses with the medical academy as well. So the medical academy's main campus is actually next to the office. So they sometimes, like, for example, they share the chemistry building as well. So you get students from both. You know, uh, that is obviously, uh, I'd say, a public uni, you know, like... Uh, this is obviously more, this is a private university, so, you know, they share buildings, share rooms sometimes, even some medical academy students, they, uh, they share the other building there, but I believe this building is only for institute students, so, you know, anyone that's interested only in here. The other building, it's a big building, so they, I think they share that building as well, I'm not too sure, but I, I do, I have seen medical academy students around this campus as well. So.